Hi everyone, Elliot Jacobson here for Disaster Diaries. It is June 22nd, 2022, the first full day of summer this year. And I wanna read a recent essay that I wrote and posted on my blog. Uh, it's called, The Summer of Fuckery is Upon Us. And I wrote it about uh, three days ago and posted it up there. But now we're really into summer, so I thought as my uh, homage to the summer season, I would just go ahead and, and read this one to you. So um, before I do that, I just want to invite you to check out my blog here. Uh, there's a few interesting things that you might um, want to look at, so a lot of the essays that you may not have read before. I also have a little climate casino where I talk about some of the catastrophic events that are coming uh, our way soon, and I give odds for when uh, they're going to happen. So I don't actually take bets on this stuff, but it's kind of just a, a fun thing to see how a casino guy thinks about um, these events in terms of odds. And you can visit my YouTube channel where I have a bunch of videos posted and, and so on. So I hope you'll take a look, uh, explore my blog a little bit. You can subscribe if you want notifications there. So, all right, let us read this article. The Summer of Fuckery is Upon Us. Summer begins today, and collapse is already busting out all over. In case your limited time for news absorption is focused on politics, mass shootings, and celebrity updates, you may have missed the news. Planetary and social systems are crashing. Species are going extinct. The world is coming to an end. You name it, it's happening right now. First, the biblical ones. Famine, war, pestilence, death. Yeah, all those. Record heat waves, record floods, record fires, record rains. Check, 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 check. Inflation, stock market and crypto collapse, food and water shortages, supply chain collapse. Yep, all those too. Add a dash of new records for sea level rise, earth energy imbalance, ocean heat content, glacial melt, greenhouse gas levels, and sea ice extent. Top it off with the devastation caused by coral bleaching, an insect apocalypse, cows dying from heat in the field, and birds falling dead from the skies. Cut up two bananas, mix it all together with a million Hiroshima-sized nuclear bombs worth of heat per day in a planet-sized blender and you've got one fucked up Earth smoothie. Many of these things are going to get much worse over the next few months. It's not a fanciful prediction. You don't need to be a psychic healer to read the planet's cosmic aura. The color of everything is red. It's a matter of physics. Direct sunlight scorching the northern hemisphere will do what it always does. Heat up the oceans, land, and atmosphere and melt snow and ice. Only this year, it's happening faster, and it's a lot hotter. Oh yeah, one more ingredient I forgot to mention. All signs point to a third straight La Nina in the fall. That means that whatever climatic processes are going on now, we should expect more for the remainder of 2022. La Ninas tend to be cooler than average, uh, for the planet, as heat absorbed by the oceans is kept locked in by the trade winds and ocean currents. As of the latest assessment by NOAA, it looks like by early 2023, the current La Nina will be ending, and an El Nino may even be forecast. If that's the case, then we'll soon be looking back on 2022 as the last cool year with widely available survivable habitat on this planet. In other words, if an El Nino happens next year, the summer of fuckery we'll experience in 2023 will be exponentially worse than 2022. Here in Santa Barbara, we've been experiencing a wave of brown pelicans showing up on our beaches over the last few weeks. Disoriented, weak with hunger, unable to fly or feed themselves. Normally, these magnificent birds spend the winter in the Gulf of California and on small islands off of Baja and the California coast. Then, after their young are born, they fly up the west coast, some traveling as far north as British Columbia. Along the way, they need to eat. 
That means catching lots and lots of fish. But this year, something is going wrong. Pelicans by the hundreds are starving, and no one knows why. These starving birds need direct human intervention to survive. Fortunately, various wildlife organizations are rescuing, housing, feeding, and giving medical treatment to these wayward pelicans. Most that are rescued are recovering and gaining enough strength to be released again. Sadly, some are not. What is not yet known is if those pelicans that are released will be able to find enough food, or if they'll just end up on some other beach in a few days, once again disoriented and weak with hunger. These pelicans are a canary in the coal mine for humanity. They are carrying a message to us about what is happening to our planet right now. Their message is not an academic model showing the percent of pelicans that starve on one axis and the CO2 concentration on the other. It's hundreds of weak and disoriented pelicans on the beaches today and 422 parts per million CO2 today. It's not a message about some future catastrophic and unpredictable event like a volcano or comet where the pelicans might starve. They're starving today. It's not a message about a future time when their environment is slowly degraded and can no longer support them. Their environment is inhospitable today. Their fate hinges on rescue and treatment by the best of humanity even while their starvation and death is the direct result of the worst of human civilization. For now, here in the luxury of first world life in Santa Barbara, as in most cities across the US, Europe, Australia, and in other first world countries, I can open my refrigerator and make a sandwich with fresh ingredients bought from half a dozen packed grocery stores within a few miles of where I live. And if for some reason I don't feel like cooking, I can find 50 or more restaurants from which I can select the exact meal I want. If someone here in Santa Barbara or anywhere in the first world is hungry, it's not because there isn't enough food available to feed them. Their friends, family, and neighbors have food. Stores near them have food. Restaurants have food. Farmers grow food in their fields. Someone in Santa Barbara who is hungry has lots of choices. They could buy food, grow food, beg for food, get food from a pantry or a nonprofit, dumpster dive for trashed food, or as a last resort, they could steal food. Hunger that's due to poverty, mental health issues, homelessness, drug abuse, or just bad luck is different than hunger that results from simply having no food of any type available anywhere near where they live. Just like the pelicans, Humans who simply have nothing in their accessible geographic region to eat are a quickly growing and desperate population. There are already large parts of the planet where the people living there are dazed, disoriented, weak, hungry, tired, hot, unable to find food and unable to feed themselves because there simply is no food. They struggle on day after day hoping for some relief to come to the rescue. The Horn of Africa is seeing its fifth straight year of drought and over 40 million people are facing starvation there. More than 20% of Pakistan's population is undernourished and 45% of children under five years old have their growth stunted by hunger. Globally, about 860 million humans are suffering from insufficient food consumption. And with the current geopolitical and environmental catastrophes, the most basic food staples like wheat, corn, rice, and soy are failing in the fields or being held as blackmail by despots and kleptocrats. While the impacts of climate change accelerate and the prospects for the collapse of global industrial civilization grow more dire by the day, the least we can do is give just a bit of our first world surplus to the hungriest, where there simply would be no food otherwise. My wife and I personally donate what we can to the world's central kitchen. Please don't take this as a plug for this organization above any of the other fabulous nonprofits providing the same service. 
For now, let's do what we can to feed the hungry. My challenge to you today is to find a nonprofit that provides food to a desperate population and give what you can. The day will come soon enough when we are them. The summer of fuckery will be remembered as the summer of hunger for nearly a billion humans. And as go the pelicans, so go us all. All right, everyone, this is Elliot Jacobson. Thanks. See you later.